Hey gang, AV here. Welcome to my review of the Boss Fight Studios Vitruvian Hacks Series 2 Queen Solon, the Elven Monarch. Here she is in the packaging. As you can see, she's a carded figure in collector friendly packaging. Original artwork there on the left hand side. You can see the figure visible there in the bubble on the right, with the vast majority of her accessories also visible. Flipping it over on the back, you see the other figures that are also available in the same wave. And then her file card here on the left hand side. If you'd like to read it, feel free to pause the video and do so now. All right, that's all I gotta say about the packaging. To open it up, you just basically fold this flap here and then you slide the card out. That gives you access to the contents trays. Just give me one second while I free everything up. We'll have a look at her accessories. Come on, now. Come on out. Come on. Come on, it's stuck. All right, so first order of business is the figure stand. Just to get out of the way, it is the standard figure stand that we normally get with Boss Fight Studio figures. It's in the shape of the Boss Fight Studio logo, two foot pegs, copyright 2020 on the back. She has a pretty cool looking shield. Definitely a new sculpt on this. Nice paint work on it as well. Very cool. Flipping it over on the back, you have a slightly painted handle. Yeah, that is painted uh, brown or in the black. It also has uh, two clips here, although they are not the typical hooks that we're normal, normally used to seeing. Not sure what that's for. Um, these two hooks here appears to be what they typically used to give us for you to put the string through so that you can hang it from the figure's back. But these are open hooks, so I'm not sure what they're for. Um, maybe fit her staff? Uh, that does work. Storage for the staff, maybe. Looks pretty good. Speaking of the staff, I believe this is a an older sculpt. I think we've gotten this before, um, but it's painted black. Uh, it's black plastic with a painted green on the top. Not too bad, although the green doesn't appear to have gone all the way down to the end on mine. It kind of fades into black instead of being all green. I'm not sure if that was intentional or not. Uh, she has two swords. They both have like kind of a, a blue undercoat to them or something underneath the silver. They definitely have like a, a blue shine to them, which is pretty cool. Painted uh, at, the t at the top and the bottom with a curved handle. I don't think that's for this. I mean, you could do it if you wanted to, but I don't think that's where that's supposed to go. Um, anyway, um, here's the other sword. Very nice uh, sculpt on this. I, I like the, uh, the carved detail there on the blade. Sorry, I just realized I was out of focus. Um, two different shades of green on the handle too as well like you have the hilt and the uh, the guard very cool and that is clear um, that is a hole in the center there I can't talk today I apologize <laughs> I keep screwing up the words I'm trying to say um, anyway um, she has two sets of alternate hands um, splayed fingers 
so you can have her reaching for something or balancing herself while in a sword fight. Very cool. Um, the uh, Knight of Accord I just reviewed, the female Knight of Accord, had the same hands as well. Um, she has two alternate heads. Uh, this one, which I have to be honest, looks pretty damn good in my opinion. I am a fan of this. Uh, the hair is glued on, so on previous figures, sometimes you can swap the hair out. This is glued on, but it looks pretty damn good. The other alternate head is here, her helmeted head. She has blonde hair on this one. And here's the brunette. My, her armor was a little warped out of packaging, unfortunately. Have a look at her. Detail first, and then we'll get on to articulation. Uses a lot of the same parts as the uh, Accord Knight I just reviewed, but that's okay. Um, different paint makes her look like a di completely different character, and she looks good, I have to admit. Uh, so the head is on a barbell joint. Actually, that is a new uh, chest guard here. So only got the single peg in the back. Okay. So head is on a barbell joint. Can do a full 360 degrees. She can look up. She can look down. She can tilt from side to side to get some expression out of her arms. Would nor can do a full 360, though these do get in the way, obviously. Um, she can kick her shoulders up. Uh, stiff on mine about that far Elbows 90 degree bend they also turn All the way around wrists very stiff, okay Full 360 degree bend on mine. They also bend up and down Upper diaphragm joint here is a barbell joint. It gives a great range of motion. She can arch her back, you know, lean forward slightly because of the shape of her uh, armor. But she can also twist here. As part of the figure's construction, she does have a waist swivel as part of her construction. It's just tough to get at, with the, especially with a brand new figure and the fact that she's got this bulky uh, um, loin guard piece here. But it's there, I promise. Uh, she can kick her legs up about that high. Back, not at all because of her rear end. She can bend. Her knees are double jointed, so you can get her heel back that far, which is excellent. Ankles, point her toes down just about all the way. Point her toes up slightly, and she has a rocker joint. So nice articulation on her. More or less the same as the female knight. Not too much is lost on her outfit, however. Get her standing up. Again, getting her to stand in this terrain is going to be a little tough. It's not the figure, it's the terrain that I use for the backdrop here. My figures just don't like standing on it. All right, so for size comparison, here she is next to a 1982 vintage G.I. Joe figure, Snake Eyes. You can see she's noticeably taller than him. That's because he's three and three quarter inches, where she's closer to four. And there we go. Get you standing up here. Come on now. I don't want to use the figure base because that's cheating. It gives her extra height. Um, here she is next. Oh, come on. Here she is next to Vintage Collection Luke Skywalker. This is a newer figure, but they're still three and three quarter inches tall. Um, a more modern G.I. Joe figure, boss fight, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Dollar General Cobra Trooper. As you can see, they're much closer in height. Here she is next to her male counterpart, the Red Blank Knight from the Boss Fight Studio line. You can see that they size up perfectly. A Marvel Universe Captain America figure. And finally, Master Chief. 
So all in all, it's a very cool figure. I do like the different head sculpts. It gives you a lot of options. I guess with the helmeted head, you can make her an army builder if you want. Um, some new parts, so you get more options for accessories. Um, as I mentioned in the uh, Knight of Accord video, um, I, I pre-ordered these like a year and a half ago, which is why I have them now. Um, if you guys are interested, you can go on to the Boss Fight Studio store. If they're not up yet, they should be very soon. Um, they like to fulfill their pre-orders before they actually put their remaining stock on sale in the store. So just keep an eye out if you're interested. It'll, it'll pop up sooner rather than later. Um, that being said, if you like this video, check out my channel. And where you'll find a whole bunch of other 118 scale content, figures, vehicles, accessories, you name it, from all different types of toy lines, all different types of characters. If you like what you see there, then please subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.